You're watching a production of South Dakota Public Broadcasting. South Dakota has been home to countless storytellers through the years. Some of these storytellers were also writers, and many created their stories for young people. Gertrude Simmons Bonin loved hearing stories of Iktomi, the trickster, when she was a little girl growing up on the Yankton Reservation. As a young woman, she wrote a book of these stories and a book about her childhood. Listen. I was always glad when the sun hung low in the west, for then my mother sent me to invite the neighboring men and women to eat supper with us. I ate my supper in quiet, listening patiently to the talk of the old people, wishing all the time that they would begin the stories I loved best. At last, when I could not wait any longer, I whispered in my mother's ear, ask them to tell an Iktomi story, mother. Iktomi lives alone in a teepee upon the plain. One day he sat hungry within his teepee. Suddenly he rushed out, dragging after him his blanket. Quickly spreading it on the ground, he tore up dry, tall grass with both his hands and tossed it fast into the blanket. Aha, grunted he, satisfied with what he saw. A group of wild ducks were dancing and feasting in the marshes. Ho, oh, who is there? cried out a curious old duck still bobbing up and down in a circular dance. Ho, oh, Iktomi, old fella, pray tell us what you carry in your blanket. Do not hurry off. Show us what is in your blanket, cried out other voices. My friends, I must not spoil your dance. Oh, you would not care to see if you only knew what is in my blanket. Sing on, dance on. We must see what you carry, they shouted in both his ears. My friends, this only a pack of songs I carry in my blanket. Oh, then let us hear your songs, cried the curious ducks. That curiosity and Iktomi's trickery results in disaster for the ducks. The whole story is found in the book, Old Indian Legends. As an adult, Gertrude gave herself the name Zitkalasha, which means red bird in Lakota. She used this name when she wrote books and articles. He was the strongest cub. His fur coat was not as black. Zitkalasha said she wrote the book, Old Indian Legends, because she wanted to share the stories with people who were not American Indian. Another girl, Laura, grew up in South Dakota about the same time as Zitkalasha. For a while, she and her family lived in the just-formed town of Desmet. Later in life, Laura wrote nine books about her childhood and early adult life, and about her husband's. These books are called the Little House series. In By the Shores of Silver Lake, Laura describes seeing the house her family lived in their first winter at Desmet. It was the surveyor's house and you can visit it today. The house may seem small to us, but to Laura, it felt like a mansion. The largeness of the empty house seemed to wait and listen. It seemed to know that Laura was there, but it had not made up its mind about her. It would wait and see. Against its walls, the wind made a lonely sound, but that was outside the house. The surveyors had left their stove. It was a larger stove than the one that Ma had brought from Plum Creek. Spaced on the wall beyond it were three doors. All of them were shut. Laura tiptoed across the wide floor and softly opened one door. There was a small room with a bedstead in it. This room had a window, too. Softly, Laura opened the middle door. She was surprised. Steeply up in front of her went a stair, just the width of the door. She looked up and saw the underside of a slanting roof high overhead. She went up a few steps, and a big attic opened up on both sides of the stairs. Laura thought that there must have been a great many surveyors to need so much space. 
This would be by far the largest house she had ever lived in. Laura Ingalls Wilder's books have been translated into 26 languages and have sold millions of copies. In 1890, when Zit Kalashaw and Laura were still in their teens and 20s, L. Frank Baum was running a newspaper in Aberdeen. Children growing up in Aberdeen at that time might have heard some of Frank's stories in their beginning stages before he wrote them down. Can you read us a story? Sure. I've got some new stuff I'd like to have you listen to. He would often gather a group of children around him on the street corner to listen to his yarns. Although his world-famous book, The Wizard of Oz, begins in Kansas, here is a story he set in South Dakota called The Discontented Gopher. Mama Gopher stuck her head out of the burrow and sniffed the clear, sweet air. Before her lay a broad sweep of Dakota prairie, whose dull brown color the spring was tinting with the suggestion of emerald. Mama Gopher whisked her bushy tail, thoughtfully stroked her nose with her front paw, and uttered a little chirruping cry. Chirp, chirp, Brits, come here, Crit, Zicky. The time has come for you three youngsters to start out in life and seek your own fortunes. I went yesterday to the Gopher Fairies and implored them to grant a gift to each of my three offspring. But the fairies are busy and have many demands, since the gophers are so numerous now in existence. Yet they granted me a single magic talisman, which is contained in one of the three nuts you see before you. Each one selected a nut. Brits and Crit cracked theirs first, nothing but a nut in each. Zicky cracked his nut, and a tiny golden ball rolled out. This ball, said his mother, will grant you one of two things, contentment or riches. Which will you select, Zicky? Riches to be sure, cried the young one promptly, for there can be no contentment without riches. But Zicky learns riches aren't all they're cracked up to be, and in this story, he loses everything. Why do so many people care about stories and remember and treasure them all their lives? And what is it about South Dakota's people, animals, and land that makes for good stories? Jean Patrick has thought about those questions. She's a modern day author living near Mitchell who writes for young readers. People in larger cities or on the coasts who are not familiar with this way of life see this kind of life as being almost exotic. And I think that's something that maybe we as South Dakotans need to remember is what, seem, what may seem like a typical life to us out here on the plains actually is extremely unique. What I have found is because I write from a location that not a lot of writers are from, I actually um, can present myself as being more unique when I start submitting manuscripts to the bigger publishing houses because I do have unique insights, I have unique experiences, and many times publishers are looking for the, for the unique story. And I feel like being from South Dakota, there are, there are so many, so many things that can be written about. I do encourage um, young people to do is if they feel a calling to do something or if they have a strong dream, um, to take those first steps and do everything they can to answer the call of those dreams. Other authors who have written about South Dakota in recent years are Pamela Smith Hill, Janet Howe Townsley, and Nancy Vaglin, who wrote about bison being saved from extinction right here in South Dakota. I got interested in Scotty Phillip when I was actually a child because my grandfather had been uh, working out in this area around Pierre and had uh, seen Scotty Phillips' buffalo and sent back a postcard of, of a little carriage being pulled by buffalo, and it always kind of intrigued me. It isn't easy writing for kids. I think some people think, oh, they're little, they have small vocabulary, so if I just dress up a hippo and have it talk, you know, that'll be a successful children's book. <laughs> and, uh, you really have to, it is a, a demanding craft, you have to learn it, you have to read the good books that are written by uh, successful authors and uh, then try to find your own vision and 
do the best you can. Paul Goebel was born in Great Britain, but moved to South Dakota to write and illustrate stories about American Indians on the Great Plains. Good as these authors are, we shouldn't forget our authors of the past, including Charles Eastman. Like Zitkala Shah, he was among the first writers to help the nation understand American Indian life. Eastman earned a medical degree from Boston University, returned to South Dakota to be a doctor at Pine Ridge, and to write. Badger Clark is another author from the past, best remembered for his poetry. Badger made a living traveling the country, sharing poems with audiences. There's some that like the city, grass that's curried smooth and green, theaters and strangling collars, wagons run by gasoline. But for me, it's horse and saddle every day without a change. And a desert sun a blazing on a hundred miles of rain. Just a riding, riding. Desert rippling in the sun, mountains blue along the skyline. I don't envy anyone when I'm riding. When my feet is in the stirrups and my horse is on the bust, with his hoofs a flashing lightning from a cloud of golden dust, and the bawling of the cattle is coming down the wind, and a finer life than riding would be mighty hard to find. Just a ride. Riding, I don't envy anyone when I'm riding. Virginia Driving Hawk Snavy is a living South Dakota author both children and adults enjoy. Her books are certain to be read far into the future, here and across the nation. One, The Trickster and the Troll, puts a twist on the Iktomi characters at Kalashanu by putting him into stories with a Norwegian troll. Her writing earned Virginia Driving Hawk Snavy the National Humanities Medal, presented by President Bill Clinton in 2000. She was the first South Dakotan awarded that honor. I get a little defensive sometimes, too, because people still think that if you're going to write, you have to go to New York City or Los Angeles or someplace other than the upper Midwest. And we have wonderful stories right here, and they can be told all over the world. South Dakota has a very unique uh, uh, culture, in a sense. It's biculture and, and actually multicultural because of all the different immigrants that we've had in this state and how we've managed to get along and not get along all of these years. It's a vital part of American life and it needs to be told. It's very satisfying to be published and to, in a sense, you're gaining a little immortality with your words when they're published and may last for a long time. As time moves on, storytellers help us understand South Dakota's remarkable past. And the best stories are as satisfying after a hundred years as they were when brand new. For additional information, a teacher's guide, games, quizzes, and more, log on to dakotapathways.org.